person is not necessarily doing sort of like the full drain the swamp, right? You know, he only removes, I think, you know, I think a fourth of a lot of the, the Federalist appointees and things like that. Um, you know, one of the first big battles is over the Federalist refusing to leave, right? It's, it's over the judiciary. It's over last second midnight appointments and things like that. And, and you mentioned this is you know, uh, uh, the, the degree to which the Federalists cling to power. Is, it even insults Jefferson. Like it's almost a, a, a counterproductive measure there, just how over the top they try to do to, to maintain their power. Uh, but one of the early uh, problems, though, and again, I, I think this this is just something that hits you know, throughout your, your your chapters here on on the on Jefferson, is that it, again not going far enough. Um, the Republicans are able to repeal the Judiciary Act of 1801, which is kind of a, a saving grace. You know, it gets rid of some of the, the most vulgar judicial appointments, but they do not get rid of the 1789 Judicial Act. And so, again, what you have effectively created is that while Hamiltonians have been removed from office uh, in the legislature and in the White House, we now have the third reign of government, uh, which is the judicial system that is flexing its muscles. It is imposing itself on this new old Republican-ish regime. And here you have the Federalist power maintaining to have relevancy uh, through uh, the, the Supreme Court of John Marshall, uh, who, who you know, has, has the famous quote that uh, compared to Hamilton, he is a mere a candle beside the sun at noonday. He is very much uh, driven by restoring this sort of Hamiltonian view of government. And here you have a, a Jeffersonian administration uh, that seems for almost the get go on top of their own direct appointees in the administration itself um, is, is weak to start off with. Uh, it, it does not make the necessary victories needed on the judicial front uh, that it, that you know, ends up playing a, a major role in not only you know, issues for, for Jefferson down the road, but really kind of cements uh, a, a, a political system that we're still dealing with the ramifications now with the degree to which the courts have so much more power uh, than you know, any other office out there in, in many, many yeah, ways. Yeah, absolutely. You, you made fantastic points, and this is something that really goes um, – I don't think it's it's a properly appreciated, but the a lot of cronyism in United States history it was basically protected or even caused by the judiciary. The judiciary is not a minor partner in cronyism, right? It, it, it in many ways uh, reinforces, it strengthens cronyism of various laws. <clears throat> it empowers uh, the executive and Congress to do certain things, et cetera. And this is why so many anti-federalists, uh, both when the act was passed and even subsequently, they were against the Judiciary Act of 1789, which really created the Supreme Court and the system of um, inferior courts. A lot of people might not necessarily know this, but there's nothing in the Constitution that says, you know, that, that describes the Supreme Court really in any sort of detail per se. It just says Congress has the ability to create a court, much like there's nothing in the Constitution that says uh, the uh, president, you know, the, the, the president has um, can have these executive cabinets of X, Y and Z. It just says the, the president has the power to appoint the heads of executive cabinets that Congress creates. It's sort of vague and it's wrapped up, you know, it's, it's, it's wrapped up in, in, in there. It's, it takes time to unwind, sort of like, I guess, an accordion might be a good a good way of describing this. So the Federalists, after the election of 1800, they lose the executive, they lose the legislature, but they still have the ju judiciary. Adams had appointed um, uh, John Marshall to be chief justice. Who is John Marshall? A lot of people don't really know this, but this is one of these interesting facts that I think is extremely important, is that John Marshall's younger brother, James Marshall, had married the daughter of Robert Morris. One of the wealthiest men at the time, <laughs> huge land speculator. John Marshall had worked with Robert Morris on various land deals, so on and so forth. And like a lot of biographies, they just sort of like casually mention this as if, as if it's not important. And when I read this, I'm like, wait a second. That's this is huge. This is like spent a lot more time talking about this and less about, you know, other sorts of early, you know, you know, random facts from his early life, et cetera. And so John Marshall starts to engage in what's known as judicial review, which is that the Supreme Court will start to review 
um, the constitutionality or the unconstitutionality of various uh, legislation. And he's doing this to basically protect prior Federalist cronyism. A lot of Federalists were afraid that now that the Republicans in control, they were going to repeal the Bank of the United States. They were going to maybe default or even repudiate part of the national debt, uh, you know, downsize the military, uh, repeal various laws like the Judiciary Act of 1801, so on and so forth, and that John Marshall now wants to use the Supreme Court as kind of like a sniping tower um, so it could strike down, could stop all of these uh, reform movements dead in its track by basically saying, oh, you can't do that. That's unconstitutional. And it's really, a, a, you, you, you mentioned this, and I think it's important. It's a great way, it's a great example of how the swamp, so to speak, kind of like defends. It's sort of like a turtle. You know, the turtle goes in the shell and it's like this rock, you know, it's this impenetrable edifice, right? Because then the, the judiciary, they sort of act and, 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 and they, they, they try to prevent the Republicans from, from weakening the government. But uh, they, 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 they extended their, their, their reach too much and they were, the Republicans were able to repeal the Judiciary Act of 1801. Unfortunately, they didn't go farther, as you mentioned, by repealing the Judiciary Act of 1789 or really, Jefferson, even really appointing hardcore strict constructionists to the Supreme Court. And that really just kind of sets the stage for later examples of moderation and failure. Because you're, you're only getting rid of some of the government, so then the next time the government's going to increase further and cronyism will follow through, and, and then you know, you're, now you're, you're five steps back as opposed to two steps back. So the judiciary, not taking the judiciary head on, and this is something that uh, happened during Jefferson's years as well as later years, this is a really big problem that impacted the future of special interest legislation in the United States. Mm -hmm.